Hello there and welcome to my Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Inkling Trajectory and Damage Guide. Today we're going to be covering every single one of these special moves, smash moves, tilts and grabs. I'm going to be going through all the amounts of damage that every single move is going to be able to use at maximum while also showing the trajectories of various moves at around 75%. My settings are currently to leave the CPU damage at zero, fixed damage off and the trajectory guide off. The first part of this guide will be showing the damage that each move is going to do and I'll be resetting every single time. Starting off with the basic combo, hold down the A button, you're able to do a maximum of 9 damage, and that's a combo of 3. Repeatedly pressing the A button will lead into you shooting with a splatter shot, but if you leave it for too long, the enemy will be able to escape. You can probably get around 20% out of the opponent. Moving into tilting attacks, moving forward and tilting, that does 10.8 damage. Up tilt can do 7.2. Down tilt does a 2 hit combo, and it can do up to 10.8 damage. Okay, so now we're going to move into the aerial moves, starting with the forwards air. This one's a bit difficult to land, but you can do up to 14.4 damage if you manage to time it right. If you don't time it right, you'll end up dropping to lower than 10%. Back aerial will be hitting around 12%. Because this stage is absolutely fantastic, I'm able to showcase the upwards aerial by simply placing my opponent above me on the platform. It does up to 13.2 damage. The downwards aerial is able to do 12.2%. And as you start to build up the opponent's percentage, it's going to be having the potential to spike as well. It is a tad difficult to land the spike for it because the Inkling's weapon is actually quite small. So it does take quite a bit of practice to get this right. Most of the time you're probably going to end up slightly to the side of them and then just knocking them to the side rather than spiking them like so. Now for the dash attack. Dash attack can do up to 9.6 damage and even while at 0% it does seem to launch the opponent quite far. Now we're going to move into the fully charged smash attacks. Keep in mind that charging up your smash attack for longer than maximum does not change the amount of damage at all. If you manage to get the sweet spot, you can land 26.8%. The up smash is a two hit combo. Max charge can hit 31.9. Inkling's down smash covers on both sides. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the down smash is going to hit your opponent twice. It's unlike Ganondorf's down smash where he's able to kick your opponent twice before launching them. Instead, it will cover both sides by hitting once to the front and once to the back, like so. Does up to 21 damage. Okay, moving now into specials. Now, the first special that we're going to be showcasing is, of course, the basic special, the splatter shot. It will be pushing back your opponent and you're able to control exactly where it goes. You'll be hitting around 0.5% as soon as you start to use this move, but as your ink tank starts to drop, you'll be doing less and less damage. So between the your ink is low mark and the bottom of it, you'll be hitting around 0.2% and then it will drop to 0.1% before you have to heal up and to heal up or to get more ink. Press shields, B, and you'll be able to replenish your ink supply in no more than 3 seconds. Up special is able to hit around 96 going up. And it does a little bit more on the way back down. I, I've noticed that if your opponent is more inked, when you're using your special, if you come back down, or even going up, you'll start to do 14.4% damage. So try to cover your opponent in a bit of ink before you start to use moves like this on them because you'll do more damage. Now moving on to the side special, the Inkling Roller. Make sure that you have a full tank when you're using this because this move will use a lot of ink. Take a look at the combo thing on the side, and that will tell you exactly how much damage I'm doing every single hit. Let me stop using that. Replenish the mix a little bit. I've done up to around 50%, but you were able to look at the total damage section on the side or the damage section underneath the combo area to see how much damage I was doing per hit. 16.5, 19.8. Make sure that you're not low on ink, otherwise you're going to start to do way less damage. It looks like we can hit up to 19.8% using that move. If you want to see what the move is like when we have no ink, it doesn't do a thing. Down special hits at 18% initially, and then you can start to hit significantly higher as you start to ink them further. So that one hit 25.9, 27, and then it starts to plateau around that point and you're able to do consistent 27% every single bomb that you shoot. With the inkling, it's important to be constantly inking your opponent in the fight because the specials are going to do a lot more damage if the opponent's inked. And that's what makes the inkling so powerful, especially at higher percentages and when you're starting to cover the opponent in ink. I might just add that if you jump or use your down special, you are able to throw a bomb a lot closer. Although it is a bit more difficult to land the same sorts of hits you'd be landing when you're throwing it to the side. I'm now going to lock the CPU damage at 75%. 
make sure that fixed damage is on so that I'm not going to be doing any damage to the enemy. And I'm going to put the trajectory guide on so that you're able to see every single trajectory for all of my smash attacks, my tilts, and my grabs mainly. First of all, up throw is going to be going straight up, straight back down. It's pretty much like every single one of the other grabs. Downwards grab actually launches the opponent quite high upwards, as well as launching them further forwards. The forwards grab, as you'd expect, would keep them relatively low to the ground, while also projecting them quite far forwards. The back throw is probably the best throw of the Inklings. Just like many of the other characters in Super Smash Bros, it has a fairly nice range. Next up with the smash attacks, hitting at 75%, which is going to do a fully charged attack. You can hit incredibly far. Now we're going to try a fully charged up smash. I think that would just manage to kill on Battlefield, and it would certainly kill on Final Destination. I'll try a down smash now. Fully charged, of course. Once again, it does have quite incredible range, although it seems to be keeping the enemy quite close to the ground in comparison to the forward smash. Now, on the topic of grabs, I think I might try to show off some basic combos, starting with the upwards throw. Lead into an upwards aerial, and it won't kill, but it's a pretty decent way to get some extra damage onto your opponent. I recommend leading in with a forwards aerial after you try a down throw, like so. You probably won't be able to land a second one, but it will still allow you to create some distance between you and your opponent, and it might freak them out a little bit if they're being launched across the stage when they don't expect it. I think with the backwards throw, it's probably one of the most difficult to do anything else at all with, because they're able to just easily escape like that, especially at high percentages. Although, if you do happen to be on the edge of the stage, it is a good way to launch them towards the edge and maybe spike them. There we go. Nice. Now, just to show you some of the trajectories of the aerial moves, I think I might go ahead and start off with, of course, the forwards aerial. It doesn't have much of a trajectory by the looks of it, although it does hit the enemy quite close to the ground and does manage to create some distance between you and them. Now, the backwards aerial of the Inkling is actually a lot less powerful than you might think it is, although judging by the way that it will behave when you do it, it doesn't seem that powerful a move. Just on the spot, if you fail the spike, it will launch to either side. If you happen to be on the right-hand side or the rightmost side of the enemy when you're using it, you'll launch them to the left and vice versa. Just a spike on the spot. It doesn't really launch them very far, although it is an incredible spike if you manage to land on the side of the stage. The neutral aerial is very similar to the front aerial, although it doesn't have as much launching power, although it's significantly faster than the others, and you're able to just land some easy damage because of it. Now, I might just show off some of the trajectories of our special attacks, of course, starting with the splatter shot. As you can see, it has practically no trajectory because obviously you're shooting many, many bullets and it's not an incredibly powerful move. It will launch them slightly back and upwards a little bit, and depending on your trajectory, you might be able to launch them up a little bit into the air as well. Down special has quite a big trajectory, very similar to the side smash, although only when you haven't fully charged it. The up special isn't really designed to have too much trajectory. It seems to launch them closer to the ground than anything, hits them far back a little bit, and I guess it's kind of annoying. So if you happen to be landing from recovery back onto the stage, you're able to knock them out of the way of you, so you're able to get back straight into the fight without having to worry about them camping you. The whole point of the side special is to root you in place, but it does have quite a high trajectory, if you're attacking a rooted opponent. Now for the dash attack, I was saying it does have quite a bit of trajectory, and as you start to increase the amount of damage that they've taken, it has quite a high trajectory, quite high and very far away. Definitely keeps them away from you. Alrighty, so I've got my opponent back into position. I'm gonna be showcasing the upwards aerial trajectory at 75%. It shoots the opponent very high into the air, although it's difficult to end up landing another hit afterwards. Unless you can aim it really well, and then in that case, you can probably just kick them high into the air over and over and over again. I don't think this would be a proper character guide video if I didn't manage to showcase the Inkling's final smash, of course. Want to see it? Let's do it! We chug the killer whale right in front of them, and it's able to do, you know, almost 63%. I'll try it again. Yes, you are able to move while this is happening, so you can stand in the midst of it and feel really, really awesome. Aim it down like that, and you're able to control exactly where it goes. So I think with that being done, that pretty much wraps up our Splatoon Inkling character guide for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this video was helpful, informational, 
and maybe inspires you to play Inkling a little bit more. It definitely helped me to have a bit more of an understanding of Inkling's movesets, how much damage it's going to be doing, and maybe I'll be able to play Inkling much better in the future. If you have any character suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to be doing many, many character guides, especially for the newer characters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, to help everyone familiarize themselves with all of the brand new characters that have been added into this incredible game. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. Have an awesome day, and I hope to see you all next time.